All right, so I cleaned up all my mallets and I laid them all on top of the piano here behind me. I'm just gonna grab some, play a little bit, and then talk about them and tell you what I think and which ones I like the most. Just so you know, I'm recording all the audio for the vibraphone demonstration using my Zoom H4 and you can see exactly where it's placed with relation to the vibraphone. It's a good general way to get a, a, an idea of how these mallets sound. So let's just get started. I'm gonna grab these, they're in no particular order. And uh, here we go. Ah uh, yes, these, these are the Mike Balter 25Rs. These are extremely hard mallets. I like how they sound for classical stuff. I used these, uh, I played the piece Toccata for Marimba and Vibraphone, which is written by Anders Koppel, a great uh, composer, but I do not use them for jazz. They're really hard. Well, let's take a look what I have next. These, okay, these are the Inaki Sebastian Concert Series. Uh, I can't remember where I got these, but I remember, I definitely remember ordering them online once I moved to Europe. I really like how these sound, but one of the problems that I found with jazz vibraphone mallets is that you really have a choice. You can choose a mallet that's durable and sounds okay, or you can choose a mallet that sounds really good, but it lasts you about three gigs before the yarn starts falling off. You can clearly see that on this one, the yarn started coming unraveled, and I think the reason why I only have three is because the fourth one completely self-destructed at some point, but they sound really good. Okay, these are Vibrawell V3Rs. Okay, so these are definitely not as hard as those first Balter ones. They get a little bit more of the fundamental from the metallic bars of the vibraphone, which I like. The thing that I think I didn't like about them is that they're really, really light. And so here in my room playing by myself, they sound pretty full, but as soon as you get with a band with, with bass and maybe guitar and drums, they sound really tinny and, and uh, I did not use these enough to really check how durable they are. I think I used them maybe twice and they've been sitting in my drawer ever since. Okay, let's go to the next one. The next one, these are Mike Balter 31Rs. These are sort of modeled after the Albright mallet. They're much shorter. In fact, let's see. These are exactly 30 centimeters in length, so they're, they're short. They're pretty light, although a lot of times you get mallets like this and the head will be really heavy. These are very light. The thing that I don't like about these is that they're really hard, and uh, I have the companion mallet so this is the 31R, these are the 32R. In my opinion, these are too soft and these are too hard. If there was something exactly in the middle, it would be perfect. Anyway, here's what they sound like. I might as well actually skip to these, which are the Balter 32R, as I just mentioned them. These I really like a lot. I actually use these on gigs sometimes, especially background gigs, where you're supposed to be sort of, you know, off on the side providing atmosphere for whatever dinner party that's going on, because you can really lay into the instrument without fear of it being too loud. They are a little bit softer than the Albright Malice, which I have, which I'll show you in a minute, but they get a really nice fundamental tone. Ultimately though, for playing like a, a loud gig that's more like a concert setting where the audience is actually there listening to you and wants to hear you solo, these just don't quite cut it for me. They don't have enough attack sound, but here's what they sound like. These are great for ballads. That's, that's what I'll say. All right, next set of mallets. These are Vibrawell again. So these are French made mallets and I already did the other set. These are the V2Rs and uh, I really like how they feel. The rattan is, is nice and bouncy, but it stays even. And I like the quality of the yarn and the, the core that they've put up here. So let's see what they sound like. I don't actually remember if these are harder or softer than the other ones, so we'll find out.
Yeah, so these have much more attack. These would probably be okay in a banned situation as long as you can control yourself and not overplay. But see, I know myself. I have a tendency to want to be able to hit the vibraphone as hard as possible and not worry about it being too crass sounding. Uh, these would, I would definitely have trouble staying with them myself for that. Okay, let's see what we got here. Ah, now these, okay, these are an old version of a set of mallets that everybody knows. These are the David Friedman mallets. These are the old Malatech ones. And the new David Friedman mallets now, I believe, are with innovative percussion. These mallets are what I use 99% of the time. I, I like the way they sound. Sometimes they lack a little bit of attack when I really want to play a little bit louder but these things are indestructible. This particular set of mallets right here, I have had at least 10 years. I mean, you can see the rattan is a little bit worn. There's a little bit of rattan wearing here, but that's but the, the head of the mallets are in great shape. Um, I have had some in the past where the heads will pop off during performance. These, that has not happened to. These have been rock solid. So this is what 90% of what you see in my YouTube channel I'm using. Yeah, Friedman mallets, kind of a classic. You kind of have to own these. Everybody has them. They're so versatile. They're so durable. And like I said at the beginning, uh, a lot of times those are choices that you're, you're kind of forced into one or the other when you're buying jazz vibraphone mallets. Not with these. Okay, that brings us to my newest favorite pair of mallets or set of mallets. The only problem with these is that they are not as durable. These are the Innovative Percussion, and the name is already worn off, Innovative Percussion RS251, I think that's what they are. I'll put all this in the description. These, I really love how they sound. They are, first of all, the rattan is a little bit thinner and they are heavy. These are top heavy mallets, which means they get a, a more full bodied sound, especially from the lower end of the vibraphone. The problem is that the yarn has worn off. I've had these mallets for less than eight months, I would say. I think I got them in January. In fact, I got them when I was home in the States over Christmas and uh, brought them back in January. I played two gigs with the salsa band and they were already starting to fall apart. I'm still using them just because I really like them, but I, I have to be careful which side of the mallet I actually hit the vibraphone with because if I hit it with this side, it's really hard and with this side, it's much normal. So here's what they sound like. If you want to see a whole YouTube video where I use these, you can watch the recent concert highlights from a concert I played in Saranac, New York. I use these all the way throughout. Next set of mallets we have, these are Deschler mallets, medium 116. They're pretty small uh, head. The rattan is thick and a little bit more stiff, but it still gives. So let's see what they sound like. All right, so these feel like twigs in my hand. They're very, very light, which means that uh, there's not a lot of weight going onto the bars, which means the sound is gonna be a lot more thinner, a lot, of, a lot more of the highs coming out. So, yeah, whatever, they're pretty hard. All right, these you should just know from seeing. These are the Dave Samuels. These are also the old ones, which I believe were made by Malatech. These are classics, you have to use them. I use them a lot. I don't use them as much as I use the Friedman's because they're sometimes a little too hard and slappy for my taste. But uh, if you wanna see a YouTube video on my channel where I use these, it's the, the Matthias Bublath with Takuya Kuroda and Zach Danziger playing the song called Funk Punk. I'll, I'll link that down in the description as well. Here's what they sound like. You 
might recognize these. These are the Arthur Lipner model of vibraphone mallets. They're pretty similar in hardness to the Dave Samuels ones. However, they have a they feel very different in the hand. The rattan is a lot thicker. The head of the mallet is also a little bit bigger and has this unique black and white yarn pattern. I like the way they sound, but I don't use them as much because it's more about of a feel thing. They don't really I don't get the the response from the instrument in terms of the bounce in my hand that I like. Um, when I'm playing the vibes, so I don't really use them so much, but I have used them in a couple of YouTube videos I think in the rhythm changes one I'm using these and a couple of the other ones. You, you, they're easy to spot. So here's what they sound like You can really hear the high on the low F more than the low like almost this it almost doesn't get the low sound at all. Ah, these. Okay, these are the Mike Balter 122Rs. These are really heavy. I actually like these quite a bit. Uh, they have a, a, a very heavy top part. The rattan is very thick. This is almost like, it's almost like tree trunks playing with these. It requires some serious, <laughs> you'll feel it in the forearms if you play with four mallets on these. Uh, there's a YouTube video on my channel that I use these in and that is the cover of the Foo Fighters Everlong from a concert back in 2013, man time flies. And you can see the yarn is starting to come apart just a little bit. Um, I haven't used these so much so, I don't know, the durability is, it might be an issue. But here's what they sound like. These really have a great sound. These are, this is a great set of mounts. All right, we're almost through. These are, what are these? A Putnam mallets. Okay, I remember buying these. I feel like these are maybe like Ben Thomas signature mallets. I'm not sure. Putnam mallets, they're very light. They have kind of a wider sort of a mushroom head here. And yeah, let's see what they sound like. After having just played that, I get the feeling, okay, they have an okay sound, but that right there, I was trying to play about mezzo forte, but I have the feeling that if I tried to play any louder with these mallets, they wouldn't give me anything. They're very light rattan, and the yarn is pretty thick around what seems to be a fairly narrow, sort of a UFO shaped uh, cork on the inside or a piece of wood, I'm not sure what that is. I have a feeling I'd break them before I'd be able to hear myself. Okay, these are the Balter Greens, the number 22 R's. I see a lot of people use these. They are really good mallets. Uh, yeah, they're thicker rattan than some of the other Balter ones. The problems I always have with the Mike Balter mallets is that the yarn just never lasts. You'll see when we get to some of the mallets I got at the end. These obviously have lasted because I've used them for all of one gig. See, again, you just get no sound from that low F. You get only the top octave. You only get that harmonic. Very low, very little of the fundamental, and that to me, I just, I don't like using mallets where I basically don't feel like I can use the low end of the vibraphone. Ah, okay, so here we have, these are the Victor Mendoza M23 by Vic Firth. These are a good mallet, they sound really good. I had a set of four, but you know what happened? That, that's what happens. Actually, that's kind of dangerous. You don't want to be whapping people in the crowd with flying mallet heads. The rattan is pretty thick. It doesn't bend as easily as some of the other ones. The head is fairly heavy, which is why it gets a nice sound. Maybe we'll get highlights. I'll, I'll play a little bit with this and the head will go flying off. These are a great set of mallets, but you can clearly see what the problem with them is. This is the Mike Balter 23R. 
These, actually, of all the Balter mallets, these are my favorites. I like the way they sound. They get a good fundamental from the low end of the vibraphone, and they're not too hard that you just get all that shrill overtone. But this is the problem. I have had so many pairs of these for about last 18 years, and all of them, every single one of them, looks like this. And it doesn't take very long for that to happen either. Blame me if you want, I, whatever. Like I'm, I'm playing with bands that have drummers. Uh, but all I know is that I have other mallets that don't fall apart like this, but these just do. I love them, I will keep buying them, but man, it would be great if they could last more than like three months. Whoa, that's really loud. <laughs> all right, that's pointless. All right, so, Mike Balter 15Rs. Now these, you know what I like these mallets for? I use these mallets for practicing very quietly and trying not to annoy my neighbors. They're extremely soft. These are the softest vibraphone mallets that Mike Balter makes, as far as I know, at least at the time when I bought them. You can see how much I've practiced with them because they're falling apart. Okay, now we're getting to the mallets, and this part's not really fair because these are mallets that you just can't get anywhere anymore, but I'm gonna show them to you anyway. I've got this pair, and this pair, these are the Albright mallets. These are kind of the gold standard of jazz vibraphone mallets. And they were made back in the day by a percussionist by the name of Fred Albright. So this set of mallets, the blue ones are harder than the red ones. There's generally two kinds of Albright mallets, the red ones and the blue ones. I do not use these very often. I only use them in specific situations. Number one, because I want them to last as long as possible because now you, I don't think you can get them anymore. These are the soft ones, these are the hard ones, and uh, here's what they sound like. I'll, pl I'll start with the soft. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and tune in next week.